Pumpkin soup is a winner. Midweek meals, cooler months like this, there's nothing better than a heartwarming soup and that's exactly what we're gonna make. Now I mentioned it's a soup, it's actually a chowder. Now the difference of course is we're using dairy here. Um, it is a thickened soup, but you don't need to blitz it or blend it. It thickens itself with a little bit of flour and of course those potatoes also add a little thickness. We're gonna use the Kent pumpkin. It is so, so simple and easy to do. Of course, if you wanna spice it up by adding some meat, you could. You could add some bacon, you could even add a little sausage and it would be absolutely delicious. But let me tell you something. It needs for nothing, this chowder. It's wonderful to make a big batch because then you can keep it in the fridge and warm some up whenever you want. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with some onions like you do with lots of different soups and sauces and butter. Now I use butter instead of oil because I really love the flavor of the butter and we don't cook this on a crazy high temperature and we're not gonna even get any color in it. So throw the onions into that pan now, some recipes will tell you to saute them until they go golden brown. And what they're telling you to do is to develop some color and some sweetness. Because the Kent pumpkin is already so sweet, we don't need to add any color here. And it's lovely when it's sort of still got that beautiful white color. Next, I add my garlic. We're gonna add some herbs. I've got some thyme and you can throw the sprigs of thyme in the whole thing. You don't have to remove the leaves. You just toss them all in and later on we'll pull out those stems. The thing I love about this soup is how quick it is. It's literally, once you start cooking, maybe 25 minutes. And the great news is you can actually do some of the prep while it's cooking. So of course you peel and chop your onion, that's the first step. While that's sweating, you can start chopping some of your other veggies. All you do is get yourself a veggie peeler and you literally just peel it as if you're peeling a potato and you'll see it'll come off really simply just like that. Alternatively, you can use a knife. It's totally your call. Now, if you use a knife, you'll probably waste a little bit more, and I love the fact that we don't waste it. But if you've got a nice sharp knife and you kind of just shave that skin off, that's another great way to do it. My onion's really translucent, so what I do now is I add my celery. We're gonna saute that for just a moment. The next thing that you can do is remove those seeds. So just grab yourself a spoon and you're just gonna scoop those seeds out. Now go through it and cut straight on through into little slices. Then you stack them up and slice them in the other direction. So you're sort of cutting them into these like big chips, I guess, or big sort of matchsticks. And go ahead and dice. And then next what we do is we thicken the chowder, right? So we take a little bit of flour. Don't forget the butter's already in there. So the butter and flour together are gonna create that beautiful thickening quality. You stir that flour. Now you wanna cook the flour out a little bit before you actually put the liquid in. You're gonna feel it get a little sticky on the bottom of the pan. It's exactly what you want. Remember, we're not trying to gain any color in here. So if your pan starts to gather a little color, just turn your heat down ever so slightly. Once that flour's had a minute to sort of cook out, and that'll get rid of that floury taste if you roast it on the bottom of the pan like I am, without too much color, like I mentioned. And then we add our stock. Chicken stock, if you don't have chicken stock, you can use water as well. I'll pour just a little bit to show you something. What I do now is I sort of stir, and you'll see how that flour actually thickens the chowder. So if I pull back some of that veg for you and give you a little look in there, you can see how that's getting quite thick already. Add the rest of your stock and your milk. So just make sure you run your spoon right along the base of that pan. Don't let any of that flour stick because that's how soups burn. Once it gets close to a simmer, we're gonna drop the temperature down and just gently simmer it because of course we've put a dairy product in here and if you boil dairy, it will separate. Right, so once you've got all of your pumpkin chopped, and all of your potato cut as well, just into like a nice sort of a dice, you go ahead and you add that to your pan. Of course, as that potato cooks, you know it's gonna help to thicken that soup as well because all of the starchiness of the potato. Then you grab your Kent pumpkin, add that too. Season it with a little salt. We'll adjust the seasoning again later. You pop the lid on, you drop the heat down just a little so it's just a gentle simmer and go and do whatever you like. All right, so it's been a few minutes now that I've been letting this come up to a simmer. Let's have a peek. Oh yes, perfect. Lift the lid, you see that little bubble. Now I drop that temperature down because I want to maintain the simmer. I don't want to get into a rapid boil. I'm just going to have a little taste. Mm. 
Yum. I'm tasting for seasoning, right? Because I might need to add a little more salt, but that's pretty much on the money. The pumpkin and potato need to cook. It's probably gonna take about another 10 minutes. You know what else I love about this dish? Notice how I'm using one pot. I call it a one pot wonder. There's not a ton of dishes at the end of it all. It's a really quick, simple, easy to take care of dinner. And now I've got that perfect simmer. I pop the lid on. I'm gonna go and read the paper and I'll be back in 10 minutes. Now, to make sure that your potato and your pumpkin is cooked, just fish out one of the bigger pieces, stick it onto a cutting board, or you can just taste it. But I'm just gonna take a spoon. Look at that, perfectly just slides on through. You know your potato and your pumpkin is cooked. Chowder's ready. Grab yourself a serving bowl and just ladle that gorgeous hot chowder. <laughs> the flavors in this are sensational. I finish it with just a little bit of chopped parsley, just like that. Imagine coming home to a steamy bowl of that delicious chowder. This is such a quick, simple, but hearty and delicious midweek dinner. I tell you what, I absolutely love it. I know your family's going to as well. And if you want more recipes, go to coles.com.au. And don't forget to subscribe. Just click on the links below.